to the third part of our How to Sew a Pattern series. Um, if you've been keeping up our very first video, we talked about how to read a pattern cover. Um, in our second video, our second lesson, we talked about um, the pattern pieces themselves and just kind of what you were going to find whenever you opened up your pattern book. And today we're going to talk about kind of the meat of how to sew from a pattern. This is where this can like make or break your sewing project. So it's important that you pay close attention. When you open your um, pattern uh, instructions, they look like this. Something like that. And there's instructions on all the sides. Um, this one actually came with two, two sets of, in, two pages of instructions. But anyways, it's gonna actually tell you um, cutting layouts right here. Isn't that cool? Let's pretend I'm using A. How's that? Y'all can see that one better. So it tells you, you're gonna take your fabric and you're gonna fold it in half and you're gonna lay out pieces one, two, and five on there. And then you're gonna lay the fabric out flat and lay down pieces six, four, and three. Is how that works. It is just like a map and it just shows you exactly what pieces you need to lay and which one's square. Now, you'll see some of them are shaded and dark and some of them are white. Never fear, there is an answer for everything right here in the fabric key. Can you see that? So the dark side is right side and the white um, pictures are the wrong side. So going back to your photo again, you know that you are going to lay your fabric right side up and then in this example here you're gonna lay piece five with the words facing up and then here in piece six you're gonna lay it with the words facing down does that all make sense so basically you're gonna find the cutting layouts in your pattern you're gonna take your fabric and you're gonna fold it where the selvage ends line up. The selvage edges, remember, are the ones that are finished by a machine, not cut by scissors in the fabric store. The ones that are finished by a machine, you lay those together with the wrong sides of the fabric touching. So you see pretty side of fabric on one side and pretty side of fabric on the other side. Lay that out flat, take your pattern pieces, and according to this map, lay them out exactly like the map. So right here. Then, once you're done doing that, for this example, you're gonna take the fabric, open it up flat, leave the pretty side facing up and the ugly side facing down, and follow the map in order to lay it out like this. Now, not all patterns, this is probably maybe only the second pattern I've ever made where it has you cut part of it on the on folded fabric and part of it on single fabric, but that's just the way that this one is. It's nothing to fret about, nothing at all. Um, so if we wanna go to D, like the dress I'm making, you'll see. It's the same, it's sort of the same deal. It's just laid out um, with different pieces there. So I'm gonna lay out all those pieces on over here on the fold and all these pieces get laid out flat. But when you do that, as you're doing that, I guess is the best way to say it, you're gonna lay your pattern pieces out the way that they want you to. Don't pin anything, just lay them out like they're supposed to and make sure that all of this makes sense. Make sure that everything's lining up the way that it's supposed to, that you have enough fabric, um, all of those things, because you don't wanna start pinning. It's kind of tedious work to pin. Um, so just do all of that and then make sure everything is in the right order. And on your pattern pieces, there are these big giant arrows. See these humongous arrows? That means that this pattern piece, let's find a smaller one. <laughs> it's kind of cumbersome. Here's a little arrow. See that little arrow right there? So that means that this piece needs to be laid where that arrow is straight up and down. The arrow is parallel to your selvages. Remember, again, the selvages are the machine finished edges of your fabric, not the edges of your fabric that are cut with scissors, but the machine finished edge. 
and this line needs to run parallel with those lines. So real experts will go through and they'll take a measuring tape, one for the selvage, and they'll go all the way down to that line and they'll measure all the way across and make sure it's at the same point so it's exactly perfectly straight. Um, but the rest of us that are in the real world just kind of eyeball it. And we just make sure that, you know, you can see through the tissue paper, so you can see that it's gonna look, what it's gonna look like on your fabric, basically. And you just wanna make sure it's not completely wonky, that it's, you know, somewhat straight. Um, if you're doing stuff with stripes or gingham or plaid or anything with like a real, geometric kind of line going through it, you'll want that because you don't want like one part of your dress to have perfectly straight lines and the other part of your dress to be like kind of off kilter, then you'll be able to really tell. So if you're doing a lined fabric, make sure they are exactly perfectly straight all the way down or horizontal, you know, which, whichever way your lines are going. That's what those big long arrows mean. They are very important. Also, when you're laying out your fabric, you need to be very mindful of the little arrows that we talked about last week. That means you have to place the fabric on the fold. So on your little diagram, it'll show you that this piece number 14 on the diagram will be on the fold. But it's just nice to know too, like as you're laying it out, like, oh yeah, the diagram told me to put this on the fold. This is telling me to put this on the fold triple check that it's on the fold because you need it to open up and be one giant piece, not open up and be two separate pieces or else you're gonna be in a heap of trouble and you're gonna have to recut it and everything else. So pay attention to these little things and get the things that are supposed to be on the fold on the fold and double triple check that you're just following the diagram like it says. Before you pin anything, just get everything laid out like it's supposed to and make sure all the fold pieces are on the fold. Not every single one is going to be like that. Here's one that is, um, here's one that is not. It's a sleeve, it doesn't need to be on the fold anywhere. So it doesn't have that. Then you're gonna take your pins and you are going to pin through the tissue paper through both layers of fabric, assuming that there's two or the single layer, just through the one. And you're gonna pin um, on the corners um, of like a straight piece like that. Or let me find something with some curves to it. Like that. So something like this, you're gonna wanna get into all of these little crevices. Put a pin here, put a pin here, so on and so forth. And get it all pinned, get everything laid down. That way, if your dog runs across them or the wind catches, the air conditioning comes on, nothing gets blown away, everything's laying flat. And you also need it to be as flat as possible because as you're cutting it, you know, you're having to kind of pick up the fabric a little bit. So you wanna make sure that your pattern piece um, lays true to the fabric. Uh, the more pins, the better, although, as many other people might tell you that have been sewing for a while, you do get kind of lazy with it, but try and be as precise as you can because it'll make your job sewing later a lot easier. So the next step is to cut out all those pieces. You're gonna need a nice, good pair of scissors. Number one rule of sewing, nice pair of scissors. The last thing you want is your pretty fabric that you spent actual money on to get snagged or for it to slip in a certain way or whatever. Get a good pair of scissors. The ones with the orange handle are kind of universally like beginner sewer scissors. You don't have to spend a million dollars. I think those are like 20, which okay, that's a lot for scissors. I get that. But mine, I sew at least every week, sometimes more than one garment a week. And um, I've had my scissors for over a year. You can get them um, sharpened like you would a knife and they can last a really long time. So invest in some good scissors. Um, cut out all your fabric pieces. Leave the pins in, cut around everything. You'll notice there's all these little triangles all around, um, all around your pattern pieces. As you're cutting, you need to cut out those triangles. Those triangles are gonna help you know where to match up things later. So you put a little notch in your fabric. So cut, 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 notch up, notch down, cut, cut, cut. So even though the triangles are going in, you make your fabric triangle go out. That way you're not cutting into your seam allowance. That way there, you run no risk of like having a hole in your seam for whatever reason, just cut out. And then some of them are going to be two, um, two triangles together. I don't think I have any, oh, here's one. Two triangles together, see those? 
So that's just, you just go up, over, and down. You don't actually have to cut two triangles, you cut a plateau up, over, and down. Does that make sense? So as you're cutting, keep an eye out for those triangles. Don't forget that they're there and cut them all out. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces on the fabric and everything is cut out and now you've got all these little pieces of fabric and pattern together. There's these lines here, all kinds of lines. Like this one, these are darts. You'll see those. Um, you'll see little triangles. Um, you'll see some places just little dots. Some places just little dots. I'm trying to find, oh, here's something. These are pleats, pleats, all right there. Um, I wonder what I have just, oh, is this one? Yeah, so like little dots right there. So you've got all these little things that are on the pattern that need to get onto your fabric. So there are lots of tools that will help you transfer markings from the paper to the fabric. There are lots of ways to go about doing this. Probably for a beginner, the, base, the best way is to use tracing paper and a little wheel. It's like a handle with a little round um, blade, but the blade doesn't actually cut. Um, and you place the tracing paper face down on your fabric and you trace over the line with the wheel and it leaves the mark on there. They also sell all kinds of markers. They sell um, like iron on, like you draw on your pattern piece and then you iron over it and it, the iron mark transfers to your fabric whenever you iron it. Um, they have highlighters, they have pencils, they have seriously tons of products. You're really gonna have to just try a bunch of them out and see which one works best for you. I personally loathe tracing paper and the little wheel thing. I don't know why, it just is really tedious for me to get in there when it's trying to stay pinned and everything else. So the way that I do it is I take my seam ripper, like the pinpoint of my seam ripper, and I punch a little hole everywhere that there's a dot. So along my size, I need this dot here, I need this dot here, and I need this dot down here. So I poke a little hole in there, and then I take my marker, and I make a mark through the hole with my marker. Then I pull the tracing, I pull the pattern piece away, and I've got those three dots, and I take a straight edge from a ruler, and I just draw the line in myself. That is how I do it. I don't know if that's the best way for everybody, like I said, you kind of have to just figure out your own thing, but once you do, go through every single piece and mark every single thing that's on there. So we've got a dart here, we've got a dart here, we've got tons of like just random dots that we need to mark along this one. Um, let's see here, we've got pleats. So you'll need to find your size and draw whatever line is corresponding to your size. So all these lines need to get drawn. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah, so you need to just transfer all that stuff. So what you're gonna end up with after this part is a bunch of pieces of fabric in the shapes of your patterns with all the lines drawn on. So basically it's your tracing piece of tape tissue paper now in fabric form. And that's exactly where we wanted to end up. That's exactly what we need. And at this point, we're almost ready to sew, almost. We've got one more step, and that is preparing your sewing machine. We're gonna cover that next week. I'm gonna go through just, you know, loading your bobbin, you know, checking your thread, what kind of thread to use, what kind of needle to use, all that kind of good stuff. So um, stay tuned next week. As always, if you found this video to be helpful at all, um, please give it a thumbs up for me, would you? Go, why don't you just go ahead right now. See, see, it's right down there. Click it, okay, good. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. And if you wanna make sure not to miss any more videos in the sewing series, or this particular sewing series, or any future sewing series, click the subscribe button too. Um, leave comments, leave questions. I reply to everything. Um, is that it? I think so. Thanks for watching.